Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank uh, everybody for being here. I'm Kurt Johnson. I'm a director, program director of Save the Sound Connected Fund for the Environment. But more important today, I'm the co-chair of the Citizens Advisory Committee. I'd like to introduce you to a few folks who are members. Uh, many of you know Mickey Weiss. Mickey has been in the community for uh, really a generation, uh, protecting the sound through Project O. So Mickey Weiss, Diane Selditch, who is uh, with Sound Waters, who's right out here, our schooner. We will be uh, having a tour of the schooner and also a public sale at 5 o'clock. So Diane Grant, who is our, uh, our representative of all things coastal in terms of uh, activities here. So he represents the marina world, the world of people enjoying getting out on the sound. So Grant, so much, uh, thank you so much for being here. Let's see who else might be here. That may be about it from uh, CAC members. But um, I'm here just to let you know that we're celebrating the fact that this is the first time in about 20 years that citizens and nonprofit groups like ourselves, business groups like Grant represents, and municipalities all around the Sound and counties have come together with a vision for Long Island Sound, called Sound Vision. It's an action plan for the Sound over the next couple of years. I'm just going to spend a minute introducing you to some of the topics. They're on boards right before, right, right over here. Uh, and one big one, obviously, is protecting clean water to, to achieve a healthy sound, uh, creating safe and thriving places for all sound creatures. And certainly, Michael Pace talked about that. There are many examples here. There continues to be a, a, a battle right here in Old Saybrook to protect the last great coastal forest to preserve. That is part of the, the view that we need to be protecting these last critical places around the sound. We've done a lot on Barn Island, areas like that, and also restoring habitats all up and down this river. Uh, we were happy to be part of a project just a few miles from here, Bride Brook, that Chris uh, helped very much with. But it was all about bringing federal partners and state partners to reopen a small stream so that million, well, at least a quarter million of river herring can get up there every year. Uh, building Long Island Sound communities that work, and I don't think there's a better example than right here in this Old Saybrook uh, facility right here, the inn, the marina, the fact that as you walk down here, there is all kinds of information about Long Island Sound, what we need to protect, and also it's a place that, as you can see today, brings thousands and thousands of people down to enjoy the sound. So the critical thing is the kind of work that Steve is doing here, that Abby, who's part of our CIC, I'm not sure if Abby's up here, but Abby helps run the inn here, and the kinds of folks that Grant brings to the table are so critical in providing access. So part of that issue is also all about making sure that we have sustainable and smart ways to do the dredging that is necessary to keep these kinds of places open. I see a friend here from Bridgeport who runs a wonderful similar facility down uh, in Bridgeport. So these kinds of facilities are all around the coast and are the key to many people getting out on the sound. So with that, I'm just going to uh, go ahead and just remind the press that the action plan is here. Uh, it's on our website, lisoundvision.org. And um, again, this is not an environmental agenda. It is a economic agenda, a business agenda, a municipal agenda, an agenda for a, uh, a, a clean and healthy sound for the next generation. So with that, I'm going to pass on uh, the microphone to someone who has worked tirelessly at the U.S. Congress to protect our Long Island Sound and has a hard battle to do. We need to give them all the support we possibly can. Congressman Joe Courtney. 